So speaking of that, obviously the Panthers this offseason made a couple of big moves, got rid of interim coach Steve Wilkes, who went 6-6, six and six, got us back in the playoff race, hired Frank Reich, who got fired from Indianapolis to be the head coach, and we still have the ever-present quarterback issues. What do you think has gone on? What do you think about what's gone on this offseason? Um, nothing good. <laughs> so it, yeah, I mean, we can't even get a break in the off season. Um, <laughs> they have to, you know, get us all year long. I was honestly, and it sounds ridiculous because this football is supposed to be fun, but I was um, like emotionally triggered by the hiring of Frank Wright. Um, you know, Steve Wilkes was. You could tell how much better the players played under him. They rallied around him. They respected him. Um, and they all made it so obvious uh, that's who they wanted to leave them and be their coach. Um, in my opinion, uh, of course, I'm an armchair quarterback here, but uh, armchair GM, but um, Frank Reich is not qualified um, or any more qualified than Steve Wilkes. Uh so it, it kind of seemed like it was almost a slap in the face to him. Um, you can't help but wonder if his, you know, joining the racial discrimination lawsuit with um, Brian Flores had anything to do with that decision. Um, something that's going to be in the back of my mind. Because I know he made, you know, a big splash last summer or whenever he did that. Um, and he spoke out about it, you know, after is being dismissed from um, his interim coaching duties too. So, Yeah, it was super <laughs> shocking since he did so well. Like he went six and six, and this was a team who I thought we might be in the running to get uh, the number one pick when when Matt Rule was yeah. leading the way wherever he thought he was leading us. And so to have Steve take the same team, it wasn't like we had any huge changes – and turn it around to almost make the playoffs and still not get the job, I was like, damn. I mean, and he, he, Steve Wilkes, he, I don't know if he saw the writing on the wall or if he just, um, like before Matt Rule's firing, you know, had some ideas like I would do this differently or that differently. But, you know, day one from naming him interim coach, he was making changes. Um, he did a good job. It turned everything around. Um, and, you know, not to mention the fact that he he has home ties with the Panthers, and that that always helps. You know, you tend to do well when you're comfortable and you're at home. So there was more at stake in it than just um, wanting a big head coach paycheck, you know, like he actually had ties to the team. So I, just, I thought that was kind of a, a dick move. Um but then again, I, I haven't been a big fan of this ownership that much either. So true. And to kind of tie it back into uh, Wilkes's involvement with the discrimination lawsuit, I mean, that's really like th this would be my exhibit A. Uh, Washington posted a great series about the lack of diversity in NFL head coaches. And they noted that out of since I believe 1990, Three out of 14 black interim head coaches have gotten the full-time head coaching job the next year, and all three had a record of at least 500. White interim coaches have gotten promoted seven times after having a losing record as the interim coach. So it's like I would just pull up the tape and be like, this is what Matt Rule did, and the Panthers way overpaid for him. Same team, this is what I did. What more do you need to see? And it, it, you know, especially to tie it back to the Panthers and Matt Rule, um, his record, they, they stuck with him for so long um, for no reason. He had so many chances. And why don't we apply that same philosophy to Steve Wilkes? That's another, I keep pulling out stats, but I was – Curious about this, and Michael Harriet for the GRIO did a study on this last year, so everything's accurate up to but prior to this season. And white head coaches get 
a little bit more than a year longer to prove themselves than black head coaches. And everything else is just about equal in terms of performance, which is also interesting since black head coaches typically have, they're hired to clean up bigger messes Mm -hmm. and black head coaches on average have more than a decade of prior NFL coaching experience than their white counterparts. So you got to coach forever. Then you finally get a job It's with a trash team. You pull it all together. And then we show you the door quicker. Sounds awesome. I mean, it it seems like a, a pattern too. Like you mentioned, you know, they'll hire a black head coach to clean up an absolute dumpster fire of a mess. Um, They'll turn it around, maybe go like eight and eight or well, there's 17 games now, eight and nine, um, have a, a decent turnaround season. And it's, oh, that's not good enough. Um, like they get on the hot seat so much quicker. So quick. And it, you know, you can't, you can't blame anyone for joining the discrimination lawsuit. And then we're adding like retaliation onto, you know, coaches who have joined it and it, it, it's messy. 